everybody. And welcome to June 1st, which is the same day that 51 years ago, I think, Mockingbird Wish Me Luck by Charles H. Bukowski was released onto the salivating public. Okay. So this is pretty awesome. What I decided to do, I was going to do a live stream and talk about the book. But this is the first day of June. You guys haven't even started reading this yet. You better not have started reading this yet, motherfuckers. So I thought I would give you like a little history and some things that were happening around this time and some things about this book. Um, one of the first things I want to say is that this is going to be the first Bukowski piece that we've talked about, whether it's been on the Bukowski chapbook series or the Bukowski book club, obviously, that the book we're talking about is not full of a bunch of shit that was released prior. And whether it was in magazines or chat books or anything like that, the majority of this stuff, when it was released, was brand new. Since its release, like from 72 on, a lot of these poems have appeared in other things. So this book almost seems like a collection of other shit because of that. And we'll talk all about that at a later date, probably. But um, when this was originally released, most of it had never seen the light of day before. And that was uh, not necessarily a new thing for Bukowski, but uh, as we will see as his work continues through the 70s, it can be a bit rare for that to happen. There are some poems, like I said, that had been in other stuff. So um, we're going to go to the acknowledgments here. And the funny thing is, in the last book, the acknowledgement section was fucking huge. And this one, not so much. There's still a lot, more than most people would ever have. But for Bukowski, like, this isn't really that much. So um, it says, Acknowledgement is made to the editors of the following magazines where some of these poems have appeared. Adam Mind, Bear, California Librarian, Crazy Horse, Dust, Earth, Event, Grit... Half and Half, Hanging Loose, Hearse, Invisible City, Jeopardy, Kari, The Little Magazine, Mano Mano, Meatball, Micah, New York Quarterly, Second Eon, Stooge, Stony Brook, Sun, and Vagabond. Like, that sounds like a ton. Um, it really isn't that much, especially when you see that there are what like i mean this book is like 160 pages there's quite a few poems in here and again this book is broken up into three parts just like um the last book was and it makes me wonder because the books that are broken apart like that like when most books are broken apart you can tell why they were broken apart these ones you can't so I'm wondering if this was like a John Martin thing where he was just like, you know, like we don't want to like overpower somebody. So let's just have these like every so many pages we're going to do a break. I don't know if that's true. Maybe I could do the math on that and see if that like is legit. That might be legit. I don't fucking know. So anyway, so there um, I cannot wait to get into this book here. It's funny when I first read this book, I remember feeling not let down by it. But I didn't understand the hype behind that book for some fucking reason. I just remember my first read through of it, I wasn't that impressed. Every time I've read this book since, like, I really, really love this book. Like, more so than Days Run Away for sure. So, just something to be a little excited about, I guess. Um, some of the things I wanted to touch on here... So this book was released on June 1st. Now, to give you some context of like how he was doing, because if you re like look at it, um, Days Run Away was released in um, 1969. And since then, he also was released in the Penguin Modern Poets series, which was a huge boom for him. 69 also saw the uh, first printing of Notes of a Dirty Old Man 
and also um, the Bukowski sampler, a Bukowski sampler chapbook. So 1969 was fucking huge. Okay. 1970 comes along. He puts out a little tiny Black Sparrow New Year's greeting. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, what Black Sparrow would do is make these little tiny hardcover books that would have like one poem in them and give those away to their subscribers as a New Year's gift. I don't know when they started, but in 1970, this was the first one called If We Take. Um, and that poem is in this book. So we will be talking about that too. Other than that, um, his chapbook Fire Station came out in 1970. Notes of a Dirty Old Man was published in Germany, and it was the first of a ton of his German translations. Um, he really started um, doing a lot more public readings. He did his first known readings in 1969. So by 1970, he was doing a lot of them. And then in 71, Post Office comes out, his first novel. And now we're in 72. So at this point in his career, things are really on the upswing. This is becoming... Um, Instead of Bukowski being King of the Littles, like King of the Little Magazines, he's now becoming like King of the Poets, especially in the L.A. scene, especially on the West Coast and now in Germany. So in April of 1972, erections, ejaculations, exhibitions and general tales of ordinary madness was released. Now, this book is a um, big hardcover version of what the two smaller paperback books, Tales of Ordinary Madness and The Most Beautiful Girl in Town, those are this book, but broken up kind of thing. Okay. So that book was put out in April. And then June 1st, Mockingbird Wish Me Luck comes out. This is also a few months after this book comes out is the infamous um, reading at um, the City Lights Poets Theater in San Francisco, which ended up becoming the album Poems, Poems and Insults. It also becomes the focal point of the Taylor Hackford documentary, Bukowski. This is kind of like a big deal. And this is also the year where him and Linda King have their big series of breakups and where Bukowski starts seeing Liza Williams off and on. So with him and Linda King like being a full-fledged couple they wrote a chapbook together called Me and Your Sometimes Love Poems and it's a cute little um, cover I'm going to try to, I, I've talked about a lot of stuff, so I'll try to make sure I add all this shit in here. But this is the world that Bukowski was living in at the time. Um, to make things a little more, um, give you an idea of what was going on. Um, the Los Angeles Lakers win their first championship that May. The first time that the fucking Lakers won the championship. 1972. And just to give you another idea here, in 1971, 1971 was the deadline for Los Angeles City Schools to become fully desegregated. That doesn't seem that long ago. Oh my God, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy. So that's kind of like the background of Mockingbird Wish Me Luck. So I think how we're going to do this, I will read the first section, part one, and next week, we will talk about part one. The following week, we'll talk about part two. And the week after that, we'll talk about part three. And at least that way, it's not like overdoing it. And this way, too, over this week, reading just part one. So that would be if you have the echo edition of the book. Part one actually goes to page 67. And the last poem we're going to have in there is The Golfer's. So from a free 25-page booklet to the golfers. That's what the assignment is for this week. 
So read those, read it over a couple times, get to know it, um, and we will talk about it next Thursday, okay? So until next time, everybody, boom. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.